If any of my longtime viewers are still around, you may know that one of the videos that really helped my channel grow was seeing if we could beat the original Kanto games only using our starter. An easy challenge in hindsight, but one that's become something of an annual tradition on my channel. Today, we're going to give Generation 4 a chance and see if we can beat Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum only using our starter. From the research I've done, the general consensus is that Turtwig is the worst starter. So let's go with that. What's a grass consistently being the worst? Full disclosure, I am not the biggest Generation 4 fan. I'm sorry! I know it has its fans, but it's not my cup of tea. I hear the dislike button going off as I type this. As for Heart Gold and Soul Silver, give me, 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 give me. No joke, this will be my first time playing the game in almost 10 years. And I feel like it'll show in this video. Anyways, here are the rules I'll be following throughout this challenge. Feel free to pause if you need to. Okay, enough stalling. Let's go. Our good friend Barry decides it's a good idea for us to walk into the tall grass without any Pokemon, despite my mom telling me not to do that two minutes prior. Predictably, we get attacked by a couple of Starly. Thankfully, the professor forgets his briefcase while doing his research. So we steal a couple of Pokemon and take out the wild Starly. After the action is over, Professor Rowan and his assistant Lucas come back for the briefcase, noticing that a couple of Pokeballs are missing. But he's so kind that he allows both of us to keep the Pokemon that we so graciously stole. I named Turtwig Terminator, and this is the only Pokemon I'll be able to use in battle for this entire run. And by the way, we are not evolving this thing. So say hello to the only Pokemon we can use, Terminator the Turtwig. The first hour in this game reminds me why I'm not exactly the biggest fan of these games. It is so slow. The first hour is bring a map to Barry, because he forgot to kiss his mommy goodbye and forgot to grab the map. After that, I had to run around Jubilife and find these clowns so I can get the Poketech. By the way, I am playing Pokemon Diamond, because I've been told that while Platinum is considered the best version, fixing some of the pacing issues, Diamond and Pearl is overall harder, and I want to make this challenge as hard as possible. Once we get our Poketech, we are challenged by our good friend Barry. We easily bash in a Starly and his Chimchar too. Not long after, we make it to Orberg where we can challenge Rourke for our first badge. Geodude unsurprisingly falls to a Quad Week Razor Leaf. Onyx, to my surprise, just lives the Quad Week Razor Leaf. Rourke tries to heal up, but it's all in vain. Onyx can't take another Razor Leaf. Last out is Cranidos who, much like Geodude, falls to a single Razor Leaf. We nab our first badge, and Terminator tries to evolve. But we can't have that! Before heading to our next destination, we gotta make a pit stop at the Windy Valley and save some little girl's father from Team Galactic. And this is where Turdy is really gonna struggle, especially against the admins. Most of Team Galactic have poison type Pokemon, which Turdy isn't a fan of. And then the admins, like Mars, have super strong early game Pokemon, like this Perugly. Perugly can hit us hard and has a speed stat that even eclipses that of the mighty Laddie twins. At our current level, we can barely make a dent in this thing. Thankfully, just outside Windy Valley, we can get some easy experience points by grinding up some Wild Buizo and Shellos. At level 22, we learn Bite and go back in for another round. Bite crits and one-shots Mars Zubat, and after three Razor Leafs, we're able to take out her Perugly. After that little detour, we can finally challenge Gardenia for her second badge. Two Bites takes care of Cherubi, Roserade also goes down after a couple of Bites, but not before paralyzing us. Finally, her Turtwig will also fall to a couple of bites, assuming we don't lose too many turns to Paralysis. And with that, we've got our second badge. After that battle, we run to Cynthia, who gives us the HM for cut so we can get into Galactic HQ. Once in, we are challenged by Jupiter, and it's sheer luck that we didn't have to redo this battle. Jupiter's Skunt Tank resists all of our attacking moves. That's my fault, I had it in my head that Skunt Tank was part ground. And Night Slash does decent damage, even if it doesn't crit. And anyone that's battled Jupiter knows, it will eventually crit you. It ended many of Nuzlocke's that way. However, instead of attacking us, it kept spamming Screech. Which can be scary, if they actually attack that is. But it doesn't, and Terminator avoids being terminated. I am not sorry. After trekking through a rainstorm, 
we make it to Heartthorn where we're jumped and challenged by Barry. By the way, you may notice that my Turtwig's nickname is spelled differently now. That's because stupid me forgot to save my game. So I had to start all over and I misspelled its nickname. Moral of the story, save often. You might be asking yourself, why am I telling you this instead of talking about the Battle of Barry? Well, because there isn't much to talk about. At our current level, we can easily sweep his team while taking minimal damage. With little distractions, we make it to Veilstone City where we can make an attempt at our third badge. Marlene is an odd opponent. I'm not too concerned about her first two Pokemon, but I know she has Lucario on the back. So while her Metatite is out, I take this opportunity to set up and boost our attack and defense with Curse. Yeah, we're gonna lose some speed, but we don't exactly have the fastest Pokemon in the world anyway. Buffed up, we can easily take out Metatite and Machoke, but even with a plus two in attack, we're only doing about a third damage to Lucario. I recommend using Razor Leaf here to take advantage of the high crit rate. The only thing that's working out in our favor is that Lucario isn't known for its bulk, and it doesn't know any moves that do a lot of damage to us. With some patience, Lucario eventually goes down, and we claim our reward. Our next challenge is Crasher Wake. I try to up Curse to make up for our lost attack from Intimidate. However, that wasn't my brightest idea. Gyarados kept spamming Dragon Rage, which deals 40 damage every time. Three of those, and we're done. And after one Curse, we're slower than Gyarados. If we had a crit, we might be able to one-shot it. But we don't, and lose in our first attempt. So I recommend you just keep spamming Razor Leaf and hope for a crit. Much like we did with Gyarados on our second attempt. Thankfully, Gyarados is the biggest obstacle in this battle, and the rest of Wake's team goes down easy, getting us badge 4. While trailing this galactic grunt, Barry comes out of nowhere and challenges us to another battle. With the high level gap, it was an easy win. It is what I was hoping to say, but Barry's Monferno burns us, weakening our attacks that are already not very effective. We're able to make it to Breezel before going down. Next attempt. We didn't get burnt, and we were able to turn the tables on Barry, and easily sweep his entire team like we should have the first time. Following the Galactic Grunt leads us to Cynthia, who gives us a couple of errands to run. While running those errands, we run into Cyrus, who starts monologuing about how the Earth isn't perfect, he must create a new world, and before creation comes destruction, and all that stuff. Then he just leaves. Once we finish our errands, we can finally challenge Fantina, and we crunch down her entire team to get our fifth badge. As per the request of Cynthia, we head to Kanalov City to get our next badge, and to do some reading at the library. But first, Barry wants to battle again. While we still have a few curses, Barry has the Staravia spam double team. A coward strategy, but effective nonetheless, as we can't hit Staravia for the life of us. But we eventually land a hit. But by that point, our health is less than half. Yeah, we lost that one. On our next attempt, I decide to forego setup and go for an all-out attack. Don't do this. It doesn't go well. Fall into his Monferno. So next time, I set up as many curses as possible, which is the best strategy in this battle. Now we just gotta hope we don't miss too much. As long as we don't miss, we can easily wipe Barry. Our next challenge is Byron. Coming with a type disadvantage, I recommend setting up as many curses as possible. I also leech seeded his bronze on to regain some health while we set up. Thankfully, he doesn't know any attacks that do a lot of damage. With curse maxed out, we can finish off his bronze on. Steelix, however, tanks our attacks even with our stats maxed out. It doesn't even resist us. We eventually take it down, but it paralyzes us with Dragon Breath. Last out is Bastiodon, who just lives a Razor Leaf and takes us down to two health. One more attack finishes off, is what would have happened if we didn't lose a turn to Paralysis. Yep, this attempt ends in a failure. Next time, while the battle is yet again close, we do manage to get the W and our sixth badge. Then a bomb goes off while reading, and Professor Rowan tells me to head to Lake Valor to check it out. Yeah, that sounds like something a 10 year old should handle. After running past a carcass of Magikarp, we meet Saturn. I break into a cold sweat after getting hit with Rock Tomb with only 10 HP remaining. But we hang on with just 5 HP and beat Saturn on our first go. Next, we gotta run to Lake Verity to save Lucas from Mars. Admittedly, this battle does take me a few attempts. We gotta dodge poison, confusion, and sleep. As I mentioned, it takes a few tries, but we eventually get the job done. 
after trekking through 12 feet of snow, or as we Canadians call it, just walk in a boot and another day in June, we make it to Snow Point City where we meet Candace, the seventh gym leader. Typing again isn't in our favor. Not only do we have to worry about the never ending hail, but we also gotta worry about being frozen from random ice type attacks and being put to sleep from grass whistle from a bomb of snow. Not to mention all her attacks hit super hard, despite the high level gap in our favor. We need cans to not always use ice type attacks. We need high rolls and crits at certain moments. I even taught her to return to one shot Sneasel. It takes a while, but we eventually get the run we need to put Candace on ice and grab our seventh badge. We then head to Lake Acuity just in time to see Barry get his ass kicked by Jupiter. She doesn't bother with us and says she's heading back to HQ. Well, Barry sobs about not being strong enough for... Whatever, I wasn't really paying attention. We make our way through Galactic HQ, defeating any grunts that stands in our way. We eventually meet Cyrus again, who shames us for having compassion and trust and all that stuff. And so, he must delete me. Spoilers, he doesn't. But he does give me a master ball for my bravery. Cyrus is such a base villain. He beats me to Mount Cornet, where a couple of grunts won't let me through unless we double battle them. And I mean double battle, like Kate and Liza. Unless I have two active Pokemon, we can't progress. So I revive one of my HM slaves to eat a hit, and then take them out. We have yet another double battle to get through, but this time, Barry will be our dance partner. He's not very good. Despite our dead way of a partner, we managed to beat Mars and Jupiter. The Lake Guardians come and stop the Algum from messing with time. That makes Cyrus angry. Cyrus wants to battle us now. Cyrus wrecks us. And we have to do this all over again. Even speeding up the game, it takes me five minutes to get back to the summit, another 30 seconds to watch the cutscene, and another two minutes to rematch Mars and Jupiter again. Why are they making me do this? It takes me a few tries. But after changing Terminator Stealth Rock and giving a Citrus Berry to hold, we were just able to squeeze out a win thanks to Miss from Gyarados' Aqua Tail. Thank Carcius that's over. Voltner, this poor Fokage looking ass motherfucker, <coughs> is our last challenge before heading to the Elite Four. And despite his story being that he's bored because he hasn't had a real challenge in a long time, Terminator terminates his entire team on our first go, giving us our final badge. With all eight badges, we can now challenge the Elite Four. Then Barry comes out of nowhere and challenges us again. Thanks to a few lucky critical hits, we're able to take him out. Back to the real challenge. Leading the Elite Four is Aaron, the bug specialist. I decided to set up Stealth Rock as half his team is quad weak to it. But even with Rock set up, it wasn't an easy battle. Dust Toss can poison us with Toxic, and his Heracross can hit hard with Megahorn. If any of those things happen, we're not winning this battle. Drapion is also an issue. It's faster than us and tanks our attacks with ease. It takes me a long time, but we eventually defeat Eren and move right along to Bertha. This will be the only time we'll have to type advantage during this marathon. Thankfully, three of our Pokemon are quad weak to grass, making this an easy win. Next is the infamous Flint. I say infamous because he's known for being a fire type trainer with only two fire type Pokemon just shows how lacking they were in fire types in the Sinnoh region. They do fix this issue in Platinum though. As for the battle itself, along with the lack of fire Pokemon, there was also a lack of fire type moves. As in, I didn't see one being used during this entire battle. Thanks to that, we easily defeat Flint. Rounding off the Elite Four is Lucian. My plan was simple. Crunch his entire team. However, I wasn't expecting half his team to outspeed us taking some serious damage including a fire punch from Metacham, which is more fire than I saw from my battle with Flint. We also get a defense drop from Girafferic, which gave Bronzon, the only Pokemon on his team who isn't weak to Crunch, the opportunity to finish us off. On our next attempt, we managed to avoid defense drops and fire punches and take out his team with little issues. But we still have one more challenge left to go, a nightmare for many casual and Nuzlocke players alike. Someone so difficult they consider to be one of the most, if not the most difficult champion battle to date. The nightmare that is... Cynthia. She leaves a spirit tomb who has no weaknesses. So I set up some rocks and start crunching away. It does a bit of damage to us, 
but goes down in two attacks. Rose Ray goes down to a single return, and Gastrodon goes down to a single Razor Leaf. Milotic just tanks our Razor Leaf and hits hard with Ice Beam. She takes the next turn to heal up, which gives us the chance to take out Milotic with a pair of crunches. Lucario is out next, and I have nothing for this Pokemon. It resists all of our attacks. But like I mentioned earlier, Lucario isn't known for its bulk, so my plan was just hit it really hard and hope for a crit. But the drawback is, we do not have a lot of HP left, and Lucario takes us out. We need to have most of our HP intact if we're going to have any chance of getting past Lucario, which eventually happens, but we still have to deal with Cynthia's ace, Garchomp. And I'm sure I don't need to tell you how scary this Pokemon is, and we're down to about a third of our HP. I went for Crunch, hoping for a defense drop, but it's too late as it takes us out with Giga Impact. Next time, with a little more HP, Garchomp goes for Earthquake that crits us. We take it, but we're on our last legs. We manage to get a defense drop from Crunch, but anything can take us out at this point. It goes for Giga Impact, which misses, allowing us to land a crit return and take it out. And that's it. We have beaten Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum only using our starter in battle. In terms of starter challenges, this one by far was the hardest. Grass isn't known for being the best offensive typing, and we had a lot of issues with Team Galactic, more specifically the admins and Cyrus, Aaron, and of course, Cynthia. I'd say that Aaron was probably the most annoying, and it was on par with the champion battle in terms of difficulty. But I wonder how Turtwig would fare against Flit's Platinum Team, which actually has Fire-type Pokémon. But, that's a question for another day. For now, it's time to put the DS down. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe for the algorithm and to help the channel grow. And let me know what kind of challenges you want me to do in the future in the comments below. And with all that being said, I will see you all very soon. Bye.